Hey guys, Melissa here. In this video, I'm going to show you how I would wrap a square or rectangle cabochon using square and half round wire. This is what I would call like an old school wire wrapping style. So if you want to see how I made this, just stay tuned and I'll show you how. Alright, so let's get started. I have this rectangle Peter side here. This is what I'm going to wrap today. So Peter side is a little bit on the expensive side. The wire I choose to wrap it in, I want to complement the stone with. So I'm going to go with sterling silver today. I feel that would best represent my stone. And I'm going to choose square wire and I'm going to wrap it in a cage style design. I like using square wire. It's what I'm used to. It's easy to work with. And if you're not weaving anything, square wire is the direction I usually go in. And for this cage design, you need three wires at least, and it all depends on the depth of your stone. This guy's pretty thin, so I can get away with three. Three wires is the minimum, and I feel 21 gauge would be sturdy enough to wrap this stone in. If it were any chunkier, I would just add another wire. You need at least three. You need a wire for the back, a wire for the side, and a wire for the front. And the amount of wire depends on how far around the stone we have. So three quarter inch, half an inch. So we have a, an inch and a half plus one more inch, two and a half inches around. And what I usually do, depending on how many embellishments you want to do once you make the bale, I usually times that by three. So we've got like seven and a half inches of wire and you need three of them. Today I think I'm going to do a simple design. So I think seven inches would suffice. This is 21 gauge dead soft square wire. I'm just going to pull some out with my cloth. It does get a little tarnished if it sits around. That's why it looks a little yellow. So I'm going to pull them out as straight as I can. This end here is a little wonky, so I'm going to try my nylon jaw pliers and see if I can pull it straight. That's a little better. It's at the end, so I think it'll be fine. I think I forgot to mention my list of tools and materials is down in the description. Check that out if you're curious. Okay, so here's seven inches. Another seven inches. Next, I'm going to work them together. Get them all lined up. You just kind of work them with your fingers. Get them to line up next to each other. Don't let anybody twist. See how they lay perfectly flat next to each other? I'm gonna take some painter's tape too. This helps me keep them in line. Tape one end. I'm going to smoosh it down with my flat nose pliers. And then I'm going to go along still kind of work with them to get them straight. You can wiggle them. This batch I got just seems a little twisty and kinky. And just make sure, go along, make sure they all stay straight and nobody's twisting on you that'll happen. You go to the other end and they seem straight over here but then down in the middle somewhere they did a you know a half twist or something so you gotta make sure that doesn't happen. This one is still wonky. I 
and you go ahead and tape the other side. Oh, and by the way, shout out to Maya Crystals on Facebook. That's where I got this Peter site from. He's got gorgeous stones over there, so check that out. A Sharpie is handy to have, and you can mark center. That's three and a half inches. I'm going to put another piece of tape on here because these wires are just wonky today. Okay. All right, so now what I want to do is mark where I want my bindings to go. I want to leave a few millimeters on either side so I can bring a wire up to support the stone. But that's pretty much where I want my bindings. This is 20 gauge half round wire, and it's pretty much a 20 gauge round wire cut in half. So it's got a round side and a flat side. Half round wire works really well for wrapping around square wires. So I found this loose piece. I'm really hoping it'll be enough for these bindings here. So how I start my bindings, I just grab a couple millimeters on the end and bend it up at an angle. Grab my bindings and hook my hook the end right there. Grab it with your flat nose and pull it over the top. And use your fingers to push it. Flip it over, line it up with your lines. Smoosh it and pull it. And here you can adjust your end piece here. You can give it a smush and straighten it out a little bit. Okay, so adjust it, flip it over, give it a smush, and pull it over. And flip it over, give it a smush, kind of pull it over. Flip it over, give it a smush, pull it over. Oh, and I'm, I'm calling this the ugly side, and that's the side that's going to go against the stone, and you won't see it. And keep going until you fill that space. put it up against my stone. I'm going to stop there. Give it a snip. Make sure your half round ends on the same side. If your bindings are a little slanty, you can grab opposite corners and give it a gentle squeeze to straighten those out. Okay, so there's our bottom ramp. As you can see, pretty much the same width as the stone. And that's what I mean. Three wires is good for this stone. If it were any fatter, I'd probably add another wire. Okay, so we're gonna start shaping our wires around the stone so we're going to need to take our tape off. At this point you can look at your wire bundle and see if there's any wires that you'd rather have in the back and I do. That first set of wires that was all wonky and I couldn't really straighten. Now it looks all kinky. I'm going to put 
towards the back of the stump to bend the back wires. You're going to grab with your flat nose pliers right next to your bindings and you're going to bring them straight up. And then your stone should lay nicely. So they're straight up the back. So the front wires now, we're not going to bring them straight up this way. We're going to bring them straight up towards the front. This is what's nice about the square, is the angles. So you're going to bring it straight forward. Not up, but forward, I should say. And same with the other side. that is and then you're gonna push them over your stone so you have a nice gentle curve going over the top just like that and now the side ones you're gonna bring around the sides Make sure your stone is straight and even. along up the side. So now you have pretty much a cage. You can go through and you can sharpen up those corners a bit too if you want to. Use some fine nose chain nose pliers for that. Let's kind of pull them out. Sure, they're done evenly. this style we're gonna have all the wires come up and meet each other again and we're gonna put some bindings up on top here I actually saved my tape I'm gonna throw some tape back on make sure nobody's twisted kind of give that a smoosh make sure everybody's where they're supposed to be and do the same with the other side And remember, before you totally lock in your stone, try to decide what direction you want it to be. I think I'm going to go with this direction. I put this tape on too low. Where so We're going to put a new set of bindings on, and that's probably where I'm going to put it. Okay, so we're going to put some bindings on either side here. I like to do like three. I don't think this will be enough. I'll try. Okay, just like before, I put a little bend in my wire to lock it on my squares. enough. That's perfect. 
Okay, so we're gonna make three. Make sure to end your wires on the inside of the frame. Straighten these out a little bit. And do the same on the other side. I'm gonna cut a piece about the same size. Snip it. And adjust. Okay. So there are our bindings. Of course, we're going to need to adjust them. So I like to bring them down and snug them pretty close to the stone. You pretty much have to decide how far you want to go up with your wires and figure out where you want them to converge. But for now, just bring the bindings down to a nice snug position. Doing this part pretty much locks in your stone. There we go. Just down a little bit more. There. And here's where you can make adjustments with your wire to make sure your stone stays put. And you can go in the back here. You can bring them in a little bit too. Angle them in to get some better support on your stone. Okay. This guy down a little bit more. Let me take my tape off. Shouldn't need it anymore. All right. Converge time. Bringing my bindings down a little bit farther. There. All right, now I want to determine where I want to bring them together. All right, for this part, I'm going to use a clamp. You can use tape again if you want. I think the clamp's coming handy. I'm just going to make sure everybody is straight again. And give them an angle. I'm gonna gently clamp it. I don't want anybody shifting or flopping. And here, I'm just gonna put a little binding wire to keep things in place while I make my bail. That's just to keep everybody in place. So let's smoosh that down. So let's shape our bail. I'm gonna take the front two wires, or front four wires, I should say. It's technically two, but it comes up as four. I'm gonna bend the front two out slightly. I'm gonna bring the middle two forward. Make sure you got the middle two. Keep them next to each other. And we're gonna bring the front wires back. And lay nicely against the middle wires. Give them a slight bend straight up again. And the back wires we'll just pull out because we probably won't do anything with them.
Okay. Now we're going to shape the bail. Make sure those wires are coming straight down the back. You can bend your bail outward slightly so these back wires lay flat. So this is where we're at. Now we're going to put our last bindings on. All right, I'm here from the future. Here I've been saying all along how I don't like to waste silver, but I didn't like my bindings. And I took them off. Wasted that whole thing. Anyway, let's start over. You're going to have to waste from time to time. So I'm going to pull out some more half round. Cut myself off at least a foot. As you can see, I already cut my, my side wires and my back wires off because... I had done the bindings already and didn't like them. I'm gonna bend my bail forward so I can get my bail wire snug against the frame. Bring it forward a little bit more. Half round wire, flat side down. You're gonna start with your wire facing the back, pointing backward and go along the front. I got the base wrapped. And now I'm at the back and I'm gonna start wrapping the back. So now I'm gonna start feeding it through gently. No twisty turns. And just start winding it around, feeding through, and wrapping it around your bindings, nice and snug. You can use your pliers if need be. I should turn this channel into how to fix your wire wrapping mistakes because they are inevitable. You're always going to waste wire at one time or another, no matter how skilled you are. It ended up not looking so good again. So I just snipped it off right there and left the others. Doesn't look too bad to me. So I'm going to leave it like this. Of course, you're going to snip your side wires short and they kind of protect the bindings. And then you're going to snip off the back of your bail wires too. And then with a little buffing and polishing, this is what we got. Of course, this is only one way to wrap your bail. If you have a different technique you'd like to wrap your bail, you go ahead and use yours. There's so many different ways to wrap a bail. For this Peter site, I just wanted it nice and clean and simple with not a lot of embellishments. That's why I cut everybody short. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section. If you like this tutorial, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Have a great week and I'll see you next time.